Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello to you. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Manhart, where today we're going to be taking a look at the MH2 550. Now this is based on the BMW M2 competition. It's brand new. They've just completed their modifications. And as the name suggests, they've taken the power of this up to 550 horsepower. But not only that, it also has 800 Newton meters of torque. So I'm going to show you around the car, talk about the modifications, and then we'll take it out for a drive to see what this is like. We've got a lot to take a look at then on the new M2 competition from Manhart, but wait until we fire it up and you can hear the noise of the new exhaust system that they've installed on this car. So the M2 competition itself launched earlier this year. This is one of the very, very first projects to be based on the car. For BMW, it effectively replaced the M2 and features the engine previously found in the M3 and the M4. We'll go to more details about the engine when we take a look under the bonnet in a moment but firstly the car is presented in the signature design from Manhart so the gloss black finished with gold accents the stripe you can see down the side the bonnet stripe as well and the general accents that you have surrounding it and in particular one thing I really like about the M2 competition and the way that they've presented it here is the gold that you have around those three sections beneath the front grille so the body is fitted with some M Performance carbon fibre parts, for example the splitter down here, Manhart effectively deciding that those look fantastic to begin with, so why change them? So the front splitter complemented by those wing parts that you have on the side skirt and around towards the rear, the boot lip spoiler and also the diffuser where you can catch a glimpse of those enlarged exhaust tailpipes that we will be hearing more of very, very shortly. In addition, you can see it sitting a touch lower, KW lowering springs, 25 millimeters lower and also wearing 21 inch Manhart concave one wheels again finished with the gold accents that you can see surrounding them and also on the inside we've got the M performance braking system too. So the engine in the M2 competition is a three litre twin power turbo inline six that's mounted up front. As I mentioned it's the S55 unit that was previously found in the M3 and the M4 as opposed to what you might expect with a development of the original M2's engine and basically that's down to legislation but when the M2 competition first drives were held one of the things that it was highly critiqued for was the sound of this engine in this setup so what I'm interested to hear is how the Manhart exhaust system sounds when we start it up here in the showroom and then take it out for a drive so let's talk about the engine the car has had a remap the performance gains are crazy so we'll come around and just pop open the bonnet and have a look at it firstly of course getting to see the interior where not too much has been changed on this car yet so it's mostly the regular m2 competition interior we've got the manhart badge in the center of the steering wheel it's also fitted with the m performance carbon side sills but to come and open this up quickly and run over some of the numbers and data behind this so the stock m2 competition makes 410 horsepower and 550 newton meters of torque this car makes 550 horsepower, that's up 140, and it makes 800 Newton meters of torque, 250 Newton meters more. That's basically a normal or nice car's worth of extra torque versus the standard car. So the engine itself is supported beneath this lovely carbon fiber strut brace that you have inside the engine bay. But basically that's a lot of power for a car that's got quite a short wheelbase, some large tires on it, and probably quite entertaining to drive, especially on a cold day like we have today. But let's just close this back down. I think it's just about time now to jump in and to get this car started up. It is time then, so let's take a listen to this exhaust. I have, of course, 
course gone and started this drive in M2. So MDM mode, stiff suspension, basically everything set up exactly how you don't want it on the road. So it is rather firm, I'm not gonna lie. Let's press that again. We go back to normal automatic. So for the M2 competition, they introduced a number of things that you can change. So in this case, you can change the power, the throttle response, and you can also change the steering as well. But let's just gently cruise. I mean, we're straight into a traffic light right now, so we'll come to a stop. But driving along like this, it's actually, quite quiet the sound isn't imposing we've obviously got stop start the engine has come to a rest right now but i think when we get out onto an autobahn things are really going to liven themselves up but it definitely sounds pretty loud as you heard as i departed earlier on but like this the gearbox automatic gearbox smooth gentle easy nothing particularly uh, to stress about with the DCT, it's a dual clutch system. Um, you can have the car with a manual, and I drove the M2 competition before with the manual gearbox on track at Ascari, and it was epic. So much fun, it's such a playful car. You've got a short wheelbase, a lot of power, and of course, having even more power as this car does, one of the interesting things is what's it like when you're driving it normally, driving at regular speed like this. Is it jerky or jumpy? And I have to say, no, it's not. It pulls away smoothly and cleanly and easily as you'd expect, and certainly as you'd hope that it does so. So we will find somewhere where we can stretch the legs a little bit more and see what it's all about. Like with its big brothers, the other M models, you've got the drive logic system. So you can put the gearbox into three different settings. So at the moment we're actually in the softest, but you can do that independently of anything else that's going on in terms of the settings as well. But we are of course heading to the Autobahn. So let's put it into M1 for the moment, which is configured to be slightly sportier, but not all out. Um, and we'll head on out and hopefully find ourselves a de-restricted section for too long where we can open it up a little bit and see what it's made of. And I say this, but we're going straight out into Roadworks, which is obviously not ideal for a car like this. But I guess just in terms of general driving, the fact that it's so small and nimble, it's very easy to place on the road. Perhaps it's more suited to tight, twisty racetracks, you know, the Nürburgring, that kind of environment or a countryside road. But even here, you know, normal driving, I've just been leaving through the town. It's a comfortable drive, you've got a good seating position. These new seats you have for the M2 competition, they changed versus the original M2. But on that gentle you know, press of the throttle, it will drop some gears, and uh, hopefully we'll get a nice open stretch before too long. Here we go, indeed, right now. So I will manually downshift with the steering wheel paddles, drop some gears, get some more noise out of it, down to fourth gear, feel some of this torque and power. Yeah, I'm just gently pressing and we're away. My goodness, okay. Yep, lots and lots of torque. In fact, 800 newton meters. That's more torque than my AMG GTR. Well, no, it's actually the same amount of torque in a BMW M2 competition. Let's um, just hope the chap in front, there we go, pops over so the numbers on the dashboard can rise. Even just taking it fairly easy. 150 or so around the corner here. It feels playful, I'm not gonna lie. But here we go, in sixth gear, straight away, up to 210, like nothing. In fact, you get a lot of torque up towards the top end of the rev range. I notice there's an awful lot more up there even. Wow. Okay, we're up to 225 or so, 230. Yep. So it's very quick. We've ascertained that immediately. Anyway, drop down some gears. We should probably put it into a exhaust open mode. So let's press M2 there. Okay, and it starts to get a little bit louder. As you can hear. Particularly inside the cabin. So you do have piped in sound, you know, as you do often with these manufacturers these days because of the rules and how noisy the car can actually be from the outside. So I'd say you get a bit more sound in here, but not as much as I was expecting given how loud it is outside. Not so many of the burbles and crackles. Maybe it needs to warm up a little bit more as we keep driving. Unfortunately, it's looking pretty busy ahead of me at the moment. So, what else can we experiment with while we're cruising along? Well, I mean, if you put the gear shift to the right, it will go into drive, press it again. Uh, you can go into uh, the sport mode or manual if, if you're an MDM. Just drop down some gears. Of course, quick response on the downshifts. And then just to... <laughs> okay, third gear, it got very, very loose and squirmy on me. That's definitely something you need to be very aware of when driving in this car. Just drop some gears for a moment, because I think we might have a clear stretch ahead. Fourth gear, <laughs> there's so much power I've short shifted it just because of how it's delivering through. Wow. <laughs> okay, it's actually quite a thrilling ride. Just 
to experience that in such a small car. Goodness, the fact that they've got this much power out of it, this much torque out of it, of course all to the rear axle, no X drive in here, it's all rear wheel drive. Crazy, crazy numbers, and it feels a little bit on edge, which is kind of exciting to actually drive. Although, I think you have to be delicate and very aware of what you've got available under your right foot in this car, because, well, I mean, the torque delivery is, is intense, honestly. That's the big sensation. I mean, 550 horsepower is masses, uh, as well as an outright number. But it's really, I think, the torque that you notice uh, relative in this car. So for an Autobahn Cruiser, it's certainly doing a pretty good job of it. <laughs> Empty stretch, away we go. Up to what, 7,000 or so RPM, 250 Ks. Yeah, we're going 260 and I'm gonna get onto the brakes. That quick, in a 2 Series, a BMW 2 Series. Wow. Of course, if you want it to be slightly less slippy, you take it out of MDM mode. So press off the traction control, will pop it back fully on effectively. MDM being M dynamic mode, basically fun M smile mode, which you often have if you're driving a car like this. Just pure entertainment, to be honest. They still have that joyful characteristic, uh, but we'll head back onto the Autobahn in the other direction as well. See if we can continue having some open stretches because well, I'm rather enjoying this so far. And away we go again then. Honestly, there is so much torque available at any point in the rev range. That's one of the big things with the car. It's not as loud as I thought it might be. I have to be completely honest, at least certainly not on the inside. Obviously, that's because as cars get larger, there's more sound deadening, more insulation. Um, and obviously on the interior of this as well, Manhart will be developing and introducing some new components as well. But to cruise along with, it's pretty good fun. All around good fun. You just have to be really careful how much torque is available. Just really, really sensible and careful with it. In fourth gear though, traction lighting up even in a completely dead straight line in the drive. We're over 200 kilometers an hour, just effortlessly with ease. There's a lot of drama about it. Of course, it's not as composed as a larger, heavier car with a wider track would be. And obviously we're running on summer tires, even though it's a, a little bit colder, it's still 10 degrees. It's not unreasonable at all today. But, yeah, just have to keep your, keep your wits about you when you're driving in this. Countryside roads then. So this is where I can actually hear a lot more of the kind of swooshes from the turbos and that side of the noise. So if you put the car back into regular uh, comfort mode, so to speak, you know, everything's standard, you get less of the piped in audio through the speakers, which means you can hear more of the natural sounds. I know this is a particularly sensitive subject to many M2, M2 competition owners um, about the noises that it makes, but this car has the slip-on exhaust, so it also still has the new filters that engines and exhaust systems basically have to carry to meet legislation across Europe. Um, lots of American spec cars don't have these, but effectively what they do is reduce power output and stop, for example, the amount of crackles that you get out of an exhaust system, which is exactly what you want on a car like this because it's fun. So unfortunately, that's been sacrificed. This goes a little way to bring it back, and if I'm driving with the window down, of course we get a lot of wind noise. You can hear some of the bubbles, but just driving along, you don't really get a whole lot of those coming out. So what you can do is put the car just into Sport Plus mode, keeping everything else equal as it was. And I can put it back uh, into manual, which drop down some gears, and I can faintly hear them but I'm pretty sure that won't translate onto the camera. If I put the window down, maybe you can just about. If I drop it down to second gear now. A little bit of burble going on in the background. But then this is where you have to be super careful, even traction fully on, because it really is happy to break away and just break loose and go wild on you. So you do then get a little feeling that you're kind of clinging on to the car in the hope that nothing goes madly wrong, but that is part of the fun and character of it just trying to get my head around how much torque and power this thing actually has. So the ride, firm, for sure. These roads are pretty smooth. The tarmac here is, is obviously great. It is, to be often, most places you go in Germany, but it is definitely on the firm side. Get to some bumpier roads and you're aware of it, even um, when things softened up. You don't have adaptive suspension um, by default in the M2 competition, so you can't vary it as such with a button. In fact, it's the kind of blanking plate that you have in the middle. Um, but kind of has to be firm to have the go-kart characteristics. This is 50-50 one way or the other. 
Now, the interesting thing I do notice though is the pedals are really sensitive to so the brake. You have not much to begin with, and then everything in a tiny little space, which takes some getting used to so you don't kind of end up lurching on it. But driving along, it's been pretty good fun so far. But let me swing around and head back towards Manhart. One more thing, by the way, I'm back in MDM mode, so the looser traction control. Let's just drop it down to second gear and foot to the floor. Yeah, it's very, very wild. That's actually hilarious how it just wants to completely light up. You get some cool noises up towards the top end of the rev range, though. It gets a lot louder. You can hear more of the swooshes. But definitely around the corner, you do not want to be applying full throttle unless you have a bit of a death wish. Uh, so we get around the corner and drop it back down again, just to go back down to second gear. I can hear the burbles, I'm sure you can't. And then let's go back on the throttle. You can tell that if traction was off, things would get very, very lively, very, very quickly. I'm back at Manhart, so let's have a look through the interior of the M2 competition, including this installed in the centre, the Auron display, which replaces one of the air conditioning vents and gives you a whole host of information. So it's hooked up to the car and we can go through some of those screens which are controlled through this toggle on the left-hand side of the steering wheel. So just to run you through this if you haven't seen it before, basically you have live data and information, pressures, temperatures, the amount of power that you're using, charts for various things, for example if we come through here you've got a performance timer so your vmax your 0 to 100 that can all be set up um, continuing through lots of different screens reaction times quarter miles data temperatures basically a whole lot of things you can look at here g4 sensors and uh, working with manhart we've got the uh, logo there too and back to the start so this is a really nice integration lots of information for a driving enthusiast and it sits underneath the iDrive system which is the updated system so this is a touch screen now um, go back to home you've got your tiles smaller display and not the latest software like you see in the 8 series for example but it works very well it's responsive into the navigation you've got pinch for example uh, and lots of different things and you control it either through the screen or down here through the iDrive toggle as we're used to um, usual controls you can write on there press menu to go back to the home you can move those tiles around, set it up basically how you would like it. Now also down here, you have the DCT controller in place of the manual gear stick. A funny system, the way BMWs and M cars actually work. So you push it to the right to go into drive, uh, again to go to sport, um, down a gear, up a gear, and to the left for neutral, and then left and up to go into reverse, where we've got the rear view camera just to make life uh, a little bit easier. One thing, of course, you have a manual handbrake. Um, unlike most cars these days, which tend to have automatic handbrakes. So some of the controls that you have around here, this is your drive logic toggle to go through the three different stages uh, of the drive logic controller. To the left, you have the adaptive uh, controls that you can run through. That's your parking uh, sensors. The M2 competition actually has front parking sensors, which the M2 didn't. Uh, your traction button to go, for example, through the one press for MDM mode, as you can see on the right hand side, uh, or you press and hold it to turn it completely off. Uh, should you prefer DSC off. Now this display, I've talked about it before, I really like it. It's not a digital display, but the way it's illuminated and kind of multi-tiered makes it look like a digital display, which is just a really cool way of doing it. Obviously, uh, smart, unless you turn it on, it actually says M2 competition along the bottom in a, in a cool way as well. So you've got a bit of information in the center, speedo, rev counter, all pretty much more or less what you would expect. And then your controls on the steering wheel to go through different things, including your M1 and your M2 modes on the left, paddles on the back. Um, decent feel to the paddles, they're easily reachable and just about long enough. Yeah, maybe they could be a touch longer, but to be honest, that works pretty well from the beginning. So looking around, M2C, you've got a choice of stitching. You've got the orange stitch in here. You can have blue stitch as well. Uh, you've got the carbon fiber, the kind of raw feel of the carbon fiber that isn't lacquered um, for the trim parts uh, around the interior as well. And just generally, it's a nice place to be. You know, you've got the perforations in the orange to match. The launch color of the car was also in sunset orange, so that would be the exterior that matches with this. And then you can have silver, uh, you know, the usual range of colors uh, available for the car. What else do we have then? So armrest storage, you can put a phone in there. You've got a USB port as well available. A little bit of storage here as well with the cup holders, another USB port. Uh, sorry, I can't quite see that 12 volt socket as well or more or less what you'd expect. But given we're in neutral, uh, the car is warm, and actually let's put it into 
M2, so you have to press it twice to confirm it. Let's just take a quick little listen with the door open. Of course, the car is letting me know that the door is currently open, so you can hear the noise of this thing. So that is, of course, a big part of this car with its new exhaust system. I just let it cool down for a moment. So to turn it off, you put it back into first, and then you've got the red start-stop button on the dashboard. So off it goes. The Manhart logo comes back on there. So let me step out for a moment. I'm gonna have a last little look around the exterior of the MH2 550. I think the way they present the cars is really cool. And obviously the M performance parts that you have on the car just enhance the look even more as well. More aggression out of the back of it. And you can tell it's now a little bit colder this afternoon than it was uh, from the exhaust too. But coming back here, they make a good sound. It's a challenge to beat, obviously, the new regulations in this sense. I know that's a strange way of putting it from my end, but to make a car sound good, given that it has to have the filters to get to of approval, to be properly registered as a road car, it's always going to be difficult from here on. So companies like Manhart obviously working to do their best to retain the sound, to make it exciting where they can. So I think that's it for my drive today. Certainly a uh, car that was quite wild, quite leery, uh, quite lively to drive, but quite fun as a result. So if you're brave, this is the one to go for, the upgrade to the M2 competition. That's it for me though for today. Thank you very much to Manhart for the opportunity to drive the car today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and thank you as always for watching. That's it for this time though. I will see you guys again very soon. Cheers.